Hi, and welcome to our training on cash handling. This video is presented by the Internal Controls and Accounting Team. Feel free to pause the video anytime to review the content on the slides. If possible, finish the course in one sitting, otherwise take note of your stopping points so you can jump to that timestamp when you resume the course. Let's take a look at the topics we will be covering today. First, there are four internal control principles for effective cash handling. Next, we will talk about important policy requirements. And finally, we will dive into the process for preparing a deposit. Here are the four internal control principles. First, let's look at separation of duties. This principle ensures that no one person has control over the entire cash handling process. When properly established and used, this principle has many benefits in terms of accuracy and security. Dual custody is one application of this principle, where one person has physical custody of the cash while a different person monitors them. Next, let's look at accountability. This principle means that all assets must be accounted for, documented, secured, and traceable to each person involved. Ensuring you know the who, why, where, and what surrounding the access to an asset upholds this principle. Let's look at physical security. This principle consists of activities that directly influence the safety of assets. Finally, let's look at reconciliation. The principle of reconciliation consists of activities to ensure transactions are reviewed and approved. Both timeliness and accuracy are crucial. It is also important to note that the reconciliation must be done by different people. For the next few slides, we will be reviewing important policy requirements. First, perform background checks on all individuals who will be handling cash. Additionally, make sure the location in which cash is handled is secure and private, and that only certain employees have access to the cash receptacle and safe. Ensure that all checks are endorsed with an endorsement stamp immediately upon receipt. Checks must go directly to the cashier's office. Finally, remember all cash and checks must be deposited at least weekly. Document all cash transfers, cash differences, and safe combination changes. Official receipts must be provided for all in-person transactions. Safe combinations must be changed at least once a year, and safes must adhere to these guidelines depending on the amount of cash that is stored inside them. Now we'll move on to an overview of the deposit preparation process. Step one, accept cash and endorse checks. Endorse checks immediately upon receipt and verify all information on the check is accurate, current, and payable to UC Regents. Record the transaction with the receipt, then store all cash and checks in a locked location. Step two, prepare to deposit. Separate and count all monies, then complete the cashier's deposit form in the service and support portal. Step three, deposit cash. Submit your deposit in a deposit bag then use either an authorized transport service or have two employees deliver the deposit bag to the cashier's office weekly or whenever collections exceed $500. Step four, reconcile deposits. During this process, confirm the amount received, the amount recorded, and the amount deposited, the amount and the amount corrected all to the GL account are all equal. Step five, report losses. If there is a cash difference, then investigate and find the source. It could have been an issue of transposed digits. We have an example of that on the slide.
Also, report any losses to your supervisor or anonymously through the UC Whistleblower Hotline. If you have any questions or concerns about the cash handling policy, then please reach out for help. We have resources available if you have any further questions or need guidance on a specific issue. This concludes the training on cash handling. Thank you for watching.